All right, welcome back to the next video in this series. In the last video, we finished up our start level function, but we had a problem. And that problem is, well, that's the meta layer. Let's go to level one, preview this. And whenever we push jump, our guy uh, just gets possessed and has some kind of weird demonic reaction. So in our meta layout, as we've done already, we've used this as, uh, I, I called it a dumping ground earlier, but it's actually very necessary to have some of the objects exist before the game starts. And I can't remember if I made it a point to not have the player there, but if I did, I was wrong. Uh, otherwise, I might not have mentioned it at all. However, if we just grab our player from our project panel and drag him in, and make sure that he is there and he exists. We can go back to level one, preview, and now all of his attributes are there and the game works once again. And there we go. And then you can see our code to have it wait a couple seconds and then restart the layout. It did, and when the, re uh, when the layout restarts, our function is run again because we tell it in our event sheet to run. A couple of things going to happen in this video. We are going to do a little uh, further organization and then we're going to set up a zoom effect to start the layer off. First off, let's get some things organized. Over here in our project panel, I'm going to right click on event sheets and I'm going to add a subfolder. My first subfolder is going to be levels and then I'm going to click, right click, add another subfolder. This one is going to be menus. That will come into play here very shortly. And one more, I'm just going to call this one meta. I'm going to move level one event sheet into levels. I'll close that up. Uh, we don't have any menus yet, so that means controls, main, objects, functions, and meta can all go in the meta folder. Now come up to layouts and let's do the same thing. Right click, add a subfolder. Let's call this one levels. Let's add another one. And we'll call this one menus. One more. And we'll call this one meta. All right, level one layout will go in the levels folder. And then our meta goes in our meta. We obviously don't have any menus yet. We don't need that just yet. I think we got everything into a folder. If not, uh, this is what you should have. Input, meta, sprites, objects, or uh, sorry, text, tiles, and then your families. And then inside your sprites, we should have buttons, HUD, levels, objects, and particles. Now this one is optional. Uh, this is just something I like to do. This helps me find things whenever I have a lot of tabs opened up. And it's nice to take advantage of some of the features that Construct 3 offers. So if we come to level one layout and we right click on it, we can go to colors and change tab color. I'm going to pick a nice bright yellow color and I'm gonna click okay. And then my text is black, I'm gonna leave it black. And then I'm going to go to my objects, which is an event sheet. And I'm going to say colors, tab color, and I'm going to pick a black color. And then I'm going to right click on it again and change the text color to white. The reason I do this is that there is a huge contrast difference here. I'm going to make sure that this text color is black. It is. Now I'm going to go in and again, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to change all my event sheets to this white on black and all of my layouts to black on yellow. Okay. I have a few that aren't called up here, so I'm just going to double click on them and make sure that all of their colors have changed. Also, I'd like to mention that this is the only way I know to do this. At the time of this recording, I am not aware of any other way that we can 
change the colors of the tabs and text. It would be nice that we could set one up and have it as um, a default, but I have not seen that yet, so this is what we are left with. It's a little tedious, but now that we have it set up, each time we create a new event sheet or layer, we can go in and change the color really quick. Now let's create a zoom effect. To do this, we are going to have to create a new event sheet. So let's go to our meta, right click on it, and add event sheet. And we're going to call this one global variables. I'm going to just immediately go in and change the color. In our zooming, we're going to need to set up two global variables. So I'm going to right click, add a global variable, and I'm going to call this first one the zoom scale. And I'm actually going to go ahead and give that a value of 0.7. We can play with this a little later and I'll show you how that works. Okay, I'm going to right click and add another global variable. And this one is going to tell us if we're zooming or not. The way that it's used is going to tell us when it's time to start zooming. So I'm just going to call this is zooming. And that's going to be a 0, 1, true, false variable. And then we can go back to our main event sheet and let's create a group and call this uh, zoom in and inside that group I'm going to add an action go to system and I want to compare some variables and I want to say is zooming is equal to one so whenever we set the is zooming to true then we can start zooming but in order to zoom, we need to manipulate our zoom scale. Our zoom scale is going to depend on our layout scale, the scale of the layout that we're on. Let's create a sub event. So I'm going to add a sub event system every tick. Let's add an action, go back into system and let's scroll down to layout. And I want set layout scale. And the layout scale is going to be whatever our zoom scale is reading at that time. So let's use our variable that we created of zoom scale. And then up here, when we said zooming is one, we're going to set our layout scale to whatever our zoom scale variable is reading. As far as the zoom scale goes, or I'm sorry, the layout scale, one a value of one in the layout scale is what we would normally see in our viewport, how we set it up originally. If we go 0.5, that's half of one, it's going to scale everything down to half the size. Click on this top event here, and actually we can double click to add another event, and we're gonna go into our system, and we're going to compare a variable of is zooming and we want to know if it is less than one, less than the full size of the screen. And if it is, then we want to count up, make it count up until it reaches one. So let's add an action, go to system. I want to set the value of zoom scale to the zoom, whatever the zoom scale is already. And then I want to add and I'm going to add a really small number. I'm going to go 0 0.008. So for every tick, which is 60 frames per second, this is going to read whatever this zoom scale number is. And as long as is zooming value is less than 1, then it is going to keep adding 0 0.008 until it gets to 1, and then it will stop. But then we want to tell is zooming we want to give that value a chance to stop adding numbers. So I'm going to add an event, go to system, else, and then we are going to add an action, uh, system, set value of is zooming back to zero. We're not quite done with this yet. I'm going to collapse the camera here. 
In fact, I'm going to move the camera group down below. Make sure it's not in this group. Make sure it is outside its, its own group. I'm going to create another group and I'm going to call this one initialize main. Initialize main and let's add an event to that group. System on start of layout and then we can go in and set the zoom scale to wherever we, we, we want to start. System set value of zoom scale. I'll go, we said one is uh, full size, normal size. I'm going to go half, 0 0.5, which uh, over here in our global variables, I told you 0 0.7. We don't need that. We can just make that zero because we set it in our main. So zoom scale set to 0 0.5. I'm also going to reset the is zooming to zero. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to copy it and drag a copy up here. So control, click, drag, release. That sets us up at the very beginning of the layout. And then this gets us to zoom until we reach one. But then we need to tell it to start zooming, which it's going to start zooming when we say is zooming is one. And we set it to zero here. So let's go back in our functions and in our start level, function. I'm going to add an action. I'm going to go to system. I'm going to say set value of is zooming to one. And then I'm going to just move that to where I want it to start zooming. And I'm going to go up here before we create the text, maybe before that wait too. The level is going to start. This function is going to be run. It's going to create all this stuff and then it's going to immediately start zooming in because we're telling it to and 0.7 seconds later it's going to start uh, creating the text and doing all that. So let's go to our level one. Let's preview this and it did not do what it was supposed to do. Uh, let's go back over to main. Well that might be why. Our is zooming. I set these both the same. Why did I do that? Okay. I'm going to put this one on top I'm going to say zoom scale is less than one and then is zooming is equal to one. So make sure you have that. Zoom scale is less than one, is zooming is equal to one, then it should run that. Okay, let's try that again. And there we go. We zoom in and it does not, it did affect our text. All right, let's figure out what happened. That's on our HUD layer. That's what I forgot to do. We set our parallax to 0% on our X and Y, but our scale rate, we don't want it to scale. We want the HUD layer to be the same scale no matter what. So let's put that at 0%. And the only thing we want it to scale is anything that we want it to scale. And the HUD layer is not one of those things we want it to scale. So let's try that. We zoom in. Our text is all in the correct place and we are good to go. All right, that is the zoom feature. There might be one more that we need to work on. If we go into our functions and in player death, when we created this on our physics, I set the impulse at five and I said we would change that later. And then I forgot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to our on function player death. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add local variable. And that local variable is going to be, I'm going to call it death force. And the initial value, I'm going to bump that up from five to eight. So death force is eight. So let's go into our physics uh, action here and change our impulse to our variable, which is death force. So now it's going to read whatever we set this as. I'm going to play that real quick to see how much that changed it. Making sure everything else works. And there we go. Now he's really flying through the air. Okay. 
that is going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to save.